welcome to Chess for Absolute Beginners. Um, I'm assuming that you have never really played chess before and you want to learn very gently and very slowly and the for whatever reason you feel like learning this game, um, I think you've made a good decision, but it can be a little overwhelming with so much going on. So that's what this course is all about. I'm not here to turn you into a pro. I'm not here to turn you... Uh, you know, but I think by the end of this course, you're actually going to be really, really good, um, especially if you put in the time to practice. So that's why I call it absolute beginners, because I'm assuming that you kind of have no background in chess. If you do know a little bit about chess, then you can probably skip this first video. Um, but I think the videos that come after this will be pretty helpful. But I don't know, you might actually get some good stuff out of this video as well. So, yeah. Happy to, happy to have you, and um, let's take it from the top. So with that in mind, the goals of this very first video, uh, I assume you don't know how the pieces move, so we're going to spend some time with each of these pieces, getting to know how they move and how they capture and what they do. Um, second, I'm going to teach you about the concept of checkmating, but it's only going to be very, very, very basic. So I'm going to show you two incredibly... Um, uh, standard and and beginner checkmates just so you kind of get the gist of of what that is and what that means and then um, third I'm going to leave you with a homework assignment um, a good homework assignment meaning I want you to go play a couple games and with one key thing in mind and I'll tell you what that is at the end of the video uh, and then you can come back for video number two Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm starting with the king because he's sort of the name of the game. He has a little cross on his head. That's how you know he's the king. Um, my goal is to get your king, and your goal is to get my king. So that's the nature of check, chess, and um, we are going to be gunning for each other's kings. So try to keep him safe and protected, and don't let anybody get to him. Um, the king can only move one square at a time, so um, each king, if they wanted to, they can always move around the board, but they are just sort of, I like to think of them as just old men. They just really don't go very fast. They just sort of, they can go diagonal, they can go across, they can go down, they can go up, they can go up, they can go down. So they just kind of slowly walk around the board, and they don't really do a whole lot. Um, in fact, you don't use your king a whole lot in chess. Um, more on that later, but, but generally speaking, it's all the other pieces that tend to move. Um, and and the king is just somebody you protect, you protect at all costs. So that's why we're starting with the king, because he doesn't really do a whole lot. He just sort of slowly walks around the board. Or generally you'll tuck him into a corner maybe, maybe over here. And you just kind of surround them with pieces and you just kind of keep them safe. All right, let's talk about the next piece here, these pawns. These pawns are like your, they're your frontline soldiers. And you can think of, uh, I don't know, the Revolutionary War or something where everyone's lined up with muskets and swords and bayonets and they just sort of march forward. And that's kind of what your pawns do. They just march. That's all they do. They go on the march. Um... On their very first move, by the way, you can you can go out two if you'd like, or you can just go one, and that's totally up to you. Um, there's certain times when you want to just go one, and there's certain times when you want to go two on your first move. Once they've moved, they're just slow marchers from there. They just march one by one, and that's all they do. They can't go two anymore. They're just they're going one by one. Um, same thing's going on on the other side. They're going to march in this direction. They can go out one. They can go out two. These guys are kind of stuck. They can't go out any more than that because they'd be bumping into somebody. Um, and that's sort of the idea there. The way pawns capture each other is a little bit different than all of the other pieces. And so um, normally you just have to land on another piece. So if I come out two and you come out two, and many of the other chess pieces that we're going to learn about in a second, all you got to do is go step on them, go land on them. 
but that's not how pawns operate. They don't, he doesn't just come up here and pop this guy. They actually capture diagonally. So they would need somebody to be on one of these two spots in order to, um, capture. So let's say, let's say white moves one of their pawns out here and black decides to go out. Well, we'll go out two. Well, this is an option for white to capture if they want. And all you do is pick up your piece, set it on their piece, and there you go. Their piece is out of the game, and you now have that spot. And now maybe they keep advancing, and maybe you come out one, and they decide to return the favor to you, and they take your piece. And then you can take their piece. So the pawns are going to capture diagonally and forward. Um... Now these guys, whoa, what happened? Where'd my guy go? Come back. Um, now these guys are stuck bumping into each other. Alrighty, up next we have these bishops. Um, notice that you have one bishop sitting on green and one bishop sitting on white. Same thing over here. Uh, they have a little cross on them usually, or some other pieces have it on top, but similar to the king. Very religious family here. Um, the bishops are moving diagonally, and right now to start the game, they are trapped behind this line of pawns. In fact, so usually your first move is going to be to get these pawns out of the way so that these bishops have somewhere to go. So, for example, let's say this guy goes out one. Um, now your bishop is free, and he can go out really as many squares as he wants. He can go to any of these spots because he's the dark bishop, dark squared bishop. So he could go, for example, he could go there, and then on his next turn he could go here. And this bishop is always going to live on the green squares. He's never, ever going to find the white squares. He just got to get these pawns out of the way. Um, but he just bounces around in the green squares each turn. And same thing with this guy. I can move this pawn up, but he's sort of trapped. He could go here. He could come down here. If this pawn gets out of the way, he could come way out here. And he, if he wanted to, can capture. He just land right on top. And same idea here. This dark squared bishop could come here. He could come all the way down here and capture. In fact, these bishops can capture each other now. They're staring at each other. So maybe, I don't know whose turn it is. I'm not really playing turns right now, but this guy could capture this guy. Maybe this guy captures this guy. I don't know. Maybe I bring him down. You get the idea. Maybe this bishop stands a little too close to the king, and the king gobbles him up. Or maybe this bishop shouldn't have gotten, remember how pawns capture? So now this pawn could gobble up that bishop. And just like that, all the bishops are dead. <laughs> so you got to be careful where you land with them. You don't want to land too close to enemy pieces. Wow, that's not what I meant to do. Um, so there you have it. That's the bishop. Look who's joined the party. It's the rooks or the castles doesn't really matter if you call it a rook or a castle, but the official name is rook. And similar, these, you know, these bishops, they went diagonal all the time, always going diagonal. These rooks do the opposite. So a rook can move side to side, or they can move up or down. And so rooks are really nice because they can travel Although they, they, they start blocked up, right? So, so black might want to do this, and then this, and then now their bishop is free to, to move side to side. In fact, they can come all the way down here and capture pieces, and they can capture, and they can capture, and they can capture. Oh, standing too close to the king. He could just capture you. So that's the gist of how the rooks move. Um, get these pawns, remember, they only march forward. This guy takes this guy. Maybe this bishop comes out. Maybe this rook comes down. And this bishop gets scared and he runs away. And maybe this rook 
runs all the way down and captures the other rook. So what's nice about rooks is they can guard each other. So for example, if you have two here, um, and one of them goes here, I could capture you, but you would capture me right back. So they're able to watch each other um, and, and, and recapture, I suppose, avenge each other. Whereas the bishops can't do that, right? One's always on a dark square, one's always on a light square. And so if one of those gets captured, uh, you know, this guy can't capture back. So that's why having two rooks together um, is more powerful than it is having two bishops together. Although, this would be nice, wouldn't it? Okay, well, the queens have joined the party. Everybody's favorite piece, the queen. In fact, it's the most powerful piece and the piece you really don't want to lose. The only time you want to lose your queen is if you're getting the other queen in return, generally speaking. So, um, and there's a, a piece I haven't gotten to yet. We're going to get to in a second, um, but it it moves kind of funny, so I wanted to save it to last. So our queen is so powerful because she can do what the bishops do, which is to go diagonally. She can also do what the rooks do. She can go side to side and up and down. So she covers so much territory that it makes her a really powerful piece. Um, you you want to be really careful about losing her. So if I if I come in here and grab a pawn, that's cool, but this king is just going to take my queen. And that's the end of it, right? I no longer have a queen. They still have theirs, and I no longer have mine. And so um, you want to be very, very protective of her, and don't, don't just trade her, even if you're getting a good piece for it, right? Let's say... Let's say she was here, and let's say this pawn was here. Um, oh, heck, I don't know. How about that? Okay, so I might be it might be my turn as the white pieces, and I might say, cool, I can grab this guy's rook. By the way, rooks are pretty powerful. Um, cool, I can grab that rook, but he's going to capture my queen in return. And so I've gained a rook, right? I've, I've, I've taken one of his, my opponent's rooks, but he's taken my queen. And so, ah, that's not good. Yeah, so that's it. That's all she does. Just little old that. She just moves wherever she wants. Um, we're missing a rook over here, but but that's the idea. Um, a lot of players, a lot of, a lot of chess teachers will tell you, don't bring your queen out too early because there's just so many ways to attack her, right? This bishop or this pawn is attacking her. Maybe... Um, Maybe if that pawn wasn't there, then then this bishop is attacking her. Or uh, there's just so many ways you, to capture her early on that you want to be really, really protective. So she tends to hang back next to the next to her man back there, p protecting the king. And um, you can bring her out, but generally speaking, she's going to kind of hang back in the early parts of the game and, and kind of be a bodyguard for the king. Um, and, and she's also bodyguarding these pawns, um, which are the way, you know, you got to get through those pawns before you're going to be able to get to this king. So um, this king is, is what, what the game's all about. So you kind of want your king queen at home to sort of protect until you can get your king to safety. All right. Well, everybody's here. We have our final piece. The knight, or the horsey, if you want to call it the horsey, I, I will let you call it the horsey. Um, knights move kind of funny. Uh, they move in an L shape, and so um, they're going to move up to and over one. They could just as e easily move this way if you prefer, right? Up to and then over one. So this knight on his opening move can hop forward and go to either these two spots, and same with this guy, right? He can go to either of those two spots. Um, the spirit behind the knight is that they can jump over, they can jump over people. Uh, so on, is, this could be your very first move of the game, and you can move him right there. Um, he's a horse, so of course he can jump over people. This guy could move here, 
and I can hop over here and he could hop over here and these guys just sort of hop around um, and that's how they operate there I left them for last because I, I for new players it's hard to really see uh, how to strategize with them you kind of have to be able to see several moves in a, in, in advance so if I hop this guy over to this pawn for ex for example if I go if I go here um, where can I go after that and then seeing that move or that move or that move it's kind of hard to process this stuff in your head it gets a little tangled up and so I think the Knights are just I, I like to save them for last um, they're a mediocre piece they're a pretty good piece they're nice to have um, oh, it's Black's turn. Um, I've also turned on moves uh, on the computer, and most most chess websites will let you, when you click a piece, it'll give you all these dots showing you all the legal moves that you can go to. So, so for example, this pawn can go one, or you can go two. Let's go two. And then maybe this pawn can go one or can go two. And maybe this bishop go can't go on your own knight right can't land there but I could maybe go there this guy could jump down here and capture this pawn this queen could come up here and capture the knight and that's sort of the idea right it's just kind of crazy all these all these pieces I think what's hard as a new player is you've got all these pieces and they all move differently and it's really overwhelming because you you know you don't know why you're doing what you're doing um so you're just sort of moving randomly <laughs> and and you don't know what the strategy is so i suppose that's the the next part of the video is that was a black's turn here let's capture with the bishop oh we can capture with the knight right over two and up one so let's start talking strategy because I think just knowing the movements doesn't doesn't really help a whole lot. Um, you got to have <laughs> have some sort of goal. The goal is to capture the king. So this would be terrible strategy. What I'm showing you right now. What's this guy doing way out here in the middle of the board? You really, like I said, you want to tuck your kings away and keep them safe. So this is a very brave king fighting on the front lines for his army for his honor all right so let's cover kind of the gist of the game like I've been saying the object of the game is to get this king right you want to you want to trap him you want to um, capture him and so we've got two terms we use in chess one is called check and the other is called checkmate um, but let's say it's white's turn to play and white decides to move right here now, if you look, remember the queen can go in all directions. So she's actually aiming right at the king here. So when you move your piece there, you would say check. You're basically telling your opponent, hey, your king is in trouble. You better move him. And so this king needs to go somewhere because right now he's in trouble. He can remember how kings move. They can move side or side. He cannot move here because that doesn't solve his problem, right? She can still capture him there. So he's not allowed to move to a, a spot where he's going to get captured or die. So he has to really choose moving one of these two ways. Um, by the way, if black wanted to, th they could move something in between. So, for example, this, this rook could go here. Um, and now my, my queen can't get the king anymore. So, so the king is safe, right? She can, she can get this guy and... <laughs> Black is in his same problem again, right? He's back in check. He has nothing to put in between. And so he's got to step to one of the sides. So let's say black steps this way. Um, white could respond with just going straight here. And this, yes, it's check, but now it's a deeper level. It's checkmate. And the reason is because this king can't get out. Remember these pawns, they can't go backwards. So nobody can get in between us. Um, the king could move to the side or to the side, but the queen's going to get him either way, right? So it's at this point that the game would end. You would say, checkmate, you can't get out, I win, right? So because if he were to, see, it doesn't even let me move him. 
<laughs> so it says, no, he's in trouble. He's in checkmate. So the game's over. Um, and this is a typical checkmate you'll see in games. Anytime the king gets kind of blocked in behind a wall, um, that prevents him from moving forward. Uh, he's now stuck on this back rank and, um, and all you need is a queen or a rook to, to get down there. I had the same, I captured the rook, but, but the same idea would have been possible for black. All black would have needed was to take that rook. Let's back it up here. Where'd that rook go? So let's say the queen goes, the king goes here and the, the queen just moves a square. This black rook now could come and you know, my king can't get out and he can't move forward. So he's kind of stuck, but in this case, the queen could come and block it, but that's only temporary because on black's next turn, he just captures my queen. And now my king is truly checkmated. He's stuck. And so it won't even let me move the king. Won't let me move the pawns. It doesn't like any of that stuff. It just says you lose. <laughs> so that's checkmate number one, basic checkmate number one. All right, and here's a kind of a scrambled up board where here's another checkmate that's pretty typical in the game of chess. Um, supposing it's white's move to play, she would like to come down here and kind of squish the, the king, but this, this pawn is, is in the way. But that's okay. She just comes in, grabs that pawn, and now we have checkmate. Um, this king can't go anywhere. If he were to go to either side, the queen can still get him can't stay where he's at. In fact, he can't come here either uh, because the queen has those squares covered as well. Um, this guy's not, this guy's no help, right? Uh, in fact, none of these guys are any help. She can't get back. The pawns can only go forward. The king is just squished up against the side of the board. Um, notice, by the way, that black has a similar threat, but it's not quite as good. If she were to come do it, um, this king cannot, he cannot capture. Oh, sorry, he can capture. He would just take her, <laughs> and that would be that, right? So she came swooping in, grabbed that pawn, and he would just, he'd just take her. It'd be his turn, so he would just take her. Um, she's not backed up by anything. My queen is supported by my bishop. So if black were to capture my queen, well, then the bishop would come in and take the king. And so when your queen is supported, let's put all these pieces back. Um, when your queen is supported over there, you know, this, this king can't, can't capture her. But when your king is, well, sorry, when your queen is not supported, right, she's just out there by herself. So the king has no problem battling and capturing her. But this king can't do it because she's supported, right? I could support her a different way too. I could, maybe he's over here, and now this knight is supporting the queen. All right, so there's different ways to support her. Um, and now this rook is supporting the queen. Uh, so you need some way of supporting the queen so that the king not only has nowhere to go, but can't just capture back. And that's a pretty, in fact, you see this checkmate probably way more than that first one I showed you. Um, you often want to get the king. By the way, I should I should probably point out that that doesn't work with a rook. Right, he's squished up against the edge of the board. Maybe he's supported by a bishop. Um, well, he's supported by this guy too. But either way, this guy just moves. That's all. He just moves. Maybe this guy comes back here and, and notice that my, my bishop is now attacking attacking the king. But that's okay. He just moves. Uh, he can't move this way, by the way, because of this rook. So when I look at where should black's king move right now, well, he he certainly can't move here. Uh, this, square is, this square is guarded by, what, one, <laughs> two, three pieces so he certainly can't move there i can't move here because of this um he, he can't stay where he's at because of this so he has to move somewhere so but these all look like 
very fine squares for him. So he would just move, right? And you can just keep doing this. You can just keep moving your pieces. There's check, right? So there's the danger. So he'll just move again. Where's he going to move this time? Can't go here because of her. Uh, I suppose he could come. No, he can't go there either because she has that covered too. Can't move towards the rook. Well, so maybe he moves here in the corner. Um, and that's when you might start bringing your queen in to try to squish him. Right, and so on the next move, maybe maybe black uh, brings his rook over, and then you could bring your queen down and squish him again. Squished in the corner. Um, nowhere to go. Both of those squares are covered by the queen. Can't capture the queen because this rook has her protected. So in theory, he could capture the queen, but then he'd be taken right back. So um, another common common checkmate would be something like this, where the king is on the back row, and you bring your rook down, and now you're in trouble. But you can't move to either of these squares because this rook has both of those covered too. So again, nowhere to run for the king. He's doomed, and it's checkmate. And that's the spirit behind, that is the object of the game, is to try to squish the king into some sort of corner where he has nowhere to escape. And it's harder to do. I've shown you kind of two or three different ways here, but you'll get it over time. You'll start to see patterns, and that's kind of the idea, is to squish that king. Okay, I have two more really important rules of chess to teach you about. Um, so I've made this ridiculous board here. Somehow black lost <laughs> half of their pieces, and and I just took these other ones out of the game, which would not be possible, but whatever. Um, one of the best ways to get your king to safety is something called castling. And you can only castle when your king has not yet moved at all and your rook has not yet moved at all. And so this is the this is a the only time when your king see how two squares light up there's one square or two this is the only time in the game where the king can move two and you're going to get to move a second piece at the same time so watch what happens if i bring him over two spots by the way if i bring him over one he just moves that's all he can just move move to one side or the other but if it's his first time moving he can actually move two spots and two Two things happen. One is he got to move two, and the rook got to swing around and cover his backside. Uh, a couple cool things happen when this happens. Now the rooks are protecting each other, so that's nice. Um, so you kind of have the guard, rooks on guard for each other. And what's really cool is your king is now tucked in his little fortress in the corner of the board. Um, and that doesn't mean we're not going to still try to bombard that fortress. And maybe, maybe at some point you're going to bring bring well, that's gonna make me move other pieces um, you're gonna bring pieces down here to try to you know if I take here now my king is exposed right and so now if you kind of break apart your fortress now now I'm in check right because there's some danger but now my king is a little more exposed and these pieces can start to come attack me so you don't you don't want to break up the fortress if you don't if you don't have to um, maybe if this guy comes down here maybe I just go for instead of capturing him I just go forward I ignore him um, so this guy's covering that square but it's still hard for black to get his pieces in here and and mess with me so um, so yeah, so that's the idea. The other major rule, I want to back up here just real fast. You can also castle the other way. You just move your king to the left, and then the rook swings all the way around, and you do it, do it the other way too. Again, the rooks are guarding each other now. Your king's, uh, fortress is a little bit bigger here, a little more spacious, upgraded version there, and maybe at some point, um, 
you know, this, this pawn's kind of lonely on the end and he has nobody to protect him. So maybe at some point your king will slide over and now your king is guarding all three of these, these pawns. And so again, it's, it's harder for, um, to black, to, for black to bombard that fortress because if he does come all the way down, your king can just capture him. And yeah, you're more exposed, but you got a pretty good piece out of the deal, right? You took his bishop. Um, same thing can happen on the other side, right? Um, I got to get this guy out first. So maybe he takes my pawn. Um, get this guy out. And now again. Oh, why can't I castle? What's going on here? Did my king move? Well, it should it should let me castle. I don't know. Yeah, I think because I had a screwy board, but normally it would it would let me castle, and I'd go over to and bring that around. Um, the other major rule, and this is going to be an important one, it's a huge part of the game. Is okay. Is getting a pawn to the other side of the board. Um, you know, I told you earlier on that he's your he's your soldier. He's on the front lines. Well, this guy's making a run for it. Which, <laughs> oops, oh, so he got eaten up. But this rook could get him. And you know, maybe now this guy's gonna go for a run. And so, oops, checkmate. Um, let's say he doesn't see it. He goes here, and I run. And he goes here, and I run, and he goes here, and I run, and he goes here. And when I get to the very end of the board, I get an option. I get to promote my pawn. They've been such a great little soldier, and they made it all the way to the end of the board. You get to upgrade him to one of these pieces. Um, obviously, almost always you're going to want the queen. Uh, remember, the queen does everything that a bishop does, and the queen does everything that a rook does. So getting one of these two is just, um, there are really rare times when you'd want to do that, but it's I'm not going to talk about it in this video. You also might sometimes want this knight just because he moves in an L shape, but generally you're going to upgrade to a queen. Um, and now your little old pawn became a big bad queen, and now this guy's in trouble. Um, and now we can start to I think that's checkmate right there because the king can't go forward or backward because of the queen. Can't go to any of these because of this rook. Um, the queen has this covered. Oh, I did that again. And the king can't go to either of these two spots because these pawns all have those spots covered. So that would be an example of checkmate. You're, even though it's in the middle of the board, you know, the king has nowhere to go, and so he's going to be dead on his, his next turn. And so, so you win. Um, but yeah, the goal is to get the pawns to the end of the board. That's not the goal. The goal is to checkmate. <laughs> but if you get the pawn to the end of the board, it's a nice bonus. In fact, you could have multiple queens on the board um, at the same time and have five queens out there if you really want. Okay, well, it's time to play your first game. This is going to be your homework assignment is to play one or two or three games against a computer. And there's several chess websites out there. Um, most people play on chess.com, not that I'm promoting them in any way. I like uh, Lee Chess, L-I-C-H-E-E-S-S-E-E-S-S. -E -E -S -S. Um, there's other ones out there. Play on any site you want. The only reason I mention those two is because they have um, really basic computer programs. So over here on the left, you can, you can select a computer. You can play live people if you want. Um, but I think for our first couple of games, I think your homework assignment should be against a computer. And so when you click that, you get, um, you get these, these, these characters over here. And I think you should select the very first one, which I think his name is Martin.
<laughs> Martin learned chess so he could play with his young kids. He still beats them most of the time. See how you stack up. And for this for this first game, um, you know, you can pick all. You can pick assisted or friendly or whatever. Um, let's do assisted. All the no. Let's well, let's do friendly. Whatever. Um, so all I want you to kind of focus on is. I, I, we're not ready for strategy yes, just yet. You just learned all the pieces. So so just move the pieces and don't worry too much about winning or losing. And it's a nice bonus if you can get any of these pawns to the other side of the board. So maybe make your, your goal to, you know, just, just move. And they'll move back and maybe bring your knight out. And just get to know the pieces. That That's it. And I don't, I don't really like this. I, I don't think... It matters whether you're making excellent or good moves right now. Um, I'm sure I'm making terrible moves. Um, just practice. See, it says it's a mistake. That's stupid. Um, I don't care what's a mistake and what's not a mistake. We're, we're going to learn our strategy later. Um, remember I told you about castling, so let's try that. Maybe I can get this guy to the other side of the board here. He took me. This guy's cocky. Feels good to capture now. Yeah, there you go. I'll capture that. Blender. Capture another one. I'm gonna make a hole for my for my pawns here. Oh, he took me. Ooh. This guy might make it to the end of the board here. I did it. Clean. All right, you get the idea. Uh, play a game yourself. Look at this. I got two queens. I'm going to come get them. Dope. All right, that's it. Go play. Uh, see you for lesson two. And good luck. Have fun. And don't mind these this stupid trash talk from Martin over here. Go whoop him. <laughs>